We're here again at the AAAS meeting in Washington, D.C., and today we're very lucky to interview Professor Tracy McNamara. Tracy is a professor of pathology in the Veterinary Medicine College at the University of Health Sciences in Pomona. And Tracy is an expert in animals and emerging infectious diseases, and she played a very key role in our understanding of West Nile virus. This is really important because today Tracy's going to talk in the session on One Health that correlates environment, animals, and emerging human disease. Tracy, that was a really interesting story, the, the whole West Nile story, because at the time you were seeing these things, a lot of people in human medicine at least weren't listening. Could you? Tell us briefly what the problems were. Well, I, I think back in 99, there was a complete separation of uh, human medicine and veterinary medicine. And, and we also need to recognize that within veterinary medicine, we're really talking the USDA when you're talking about a powerful federal agency. And all they really care about is cows. And I was dealing with dead crows and dead zoo birds. And, you know, neither were deemed very important. So we missed early warning of West Nile virus by a good two and a half months. And, and what flipped the switch? What made people finally listen? Oh, well, uh, yeah, I encountered a lot of resistance initially and had terrific difficulty in getting my samples tested um, because People just did not believe there was any link between the birds with encephalitis and the people dying in New York City with an unusual encephalitis. I finally realized I needed to talk to people who had a real can-do attitude, BL3 containment, BL4 containment, and the ability to create novel diagnostic assays. And so I called up colleagues in the Army. And when, when public health heard that Fort Detrick agreed that this was indeed something brand new. Uh, that's when things turned the corner. I wasn't just some veterinarian, you know, raising cane about a bunch of dead birds, um, but we finally made that link between, you know, a flavy virus in birds and a flavy virus in people, and that they were one and the same. It was a very unique situation because you, you had the canaries in a coal mine, so to speak, yes. um, that you, you were very responsive to. If something like that happened today, would you encounter the same kind of hurdles? Have we learned a lesson from this? Well, it's been 10 years, and I'm afraid to say I, I really haven't seen that much of a change. Um, I think we still have the same jurisdictional boundaries between human medicine, veterinary medicine, and those species that fall outside of those paradigms um, continue to be unrepresented. Uh, zoo animals, maybe if someone called, people would listen today. I think there's enough uh, awareness of the need to integrate human and animal medicine, but you'd still be left with the question of who pays to, um, to diagnose the samples, right. because zoo animals don't fall under anyone's jurisdiction. Right. Uh, the same is true of dogs and cats, even though they might be exquisitely sensitive urban biosentinels, they're not under anybody's jurisdiction. So we still have, um, uh, we, we lack a species neutral approach to biosurveillance. And the reality is no one can predict who or what might serve as the next sentinel for the next emerging infectious disease. So the One Health movement, this, this idea of bringing these groups together to examine emerging infectious diseases and also outbreaks of existing infectious diseases, that's been in place now for a number of years. Mm -hmm. right? Uh, where do you see that movement going and do you see it as being able to overcome some of these hurdles in the next few years? Well, I think it's um, uh, positive in the, in the aspect that it's putting a lot of focus on wildlife because that is where all of the recent emerging infectious diseases have, been, uh, have come from. Um, and we certainly need to highlight or put a spotlight on our existing weaknesses and vulnerabilities when it comes to the wildlife sector. And um, if we're weak in the United States, imagine how weak we are in other countries that don't have our financial wherewithal. 
And um, I think if, if nothing else, if we could make the National Wildlife Health Initiative goals a reality, um, we would enhance biosurveillance in the United States exponentially. You just came back from the first international One Health meeting in Australia. What, what was the sense of the groups from all of the different countries at the end of that meeting? Well, uh, you know, to many of us, One Health just makes sense. Um, you know, to continue to work within these silos um, is counterproductive. And, you know, the, what everybody said is if you're looking at an epidemiologic curve and an infectious disease outbreak, a zoonotic disease outbreak, you want to push it to the far left, meaning we want to find it in animals before it appears in people in emergency rooms. And um, to be able to do that, that means we need to be able to share data across the human and animal sectors. We will need to dis address the discrepancies in diagnostic capabilities across the different sectors, specifically wildlife. And um, I think we also need to embrace the private sector because what happened in 1999 is someone doing their day-to-day -day job made an observation. And you know, it was no different from me doing my job as I had done for the previous 18 years. Um, I think it's always with an outbreak going to come down to an astute diagnostician, either in veterinary medicine or in human medicine, noticing something is different. The question is, have we closed that loop? Will we be able to get a diagnosis? Because you can't act on surveillance until you have that. Well, it's very exciting. I think it, we have the potential to really change the way we do things over the next few years concept is so obvious yes it, the connection between animal and human health so hopefully there will be a lot of changes and an improvement in both animal and human medicine soon. I think we can get there thank you very much thank you Chris. very much